Hello everybody, my name is Astrid from Expats Portugal and I just wanted to welcome everyone to another webinar of social tonight uh, where we'll be discussing the cost of living in Portugal and uh, with a panel of guests who Carl will introduce to you shortly. Uh, thank you to all of those premium members and uh, plus members who are with us today. Your donation helps us bring you webinars such as this and continue the, the Expats Portugal website on, on a regular basis. Um, if you haven't joined yet, please feel free to go over and, and, and sign up as a premium member. We always like seeing those coming through during the webinars. So, um, but uh, <laughs> Ooh, someone's hello. laughing. <laughs> that, was a nice, that was a nice little kiss to start the webinar yeah. off there. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, a room, you two. We're trying to have a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> But for now, <laughs> over to you, Carl, to start the show. Booze and kisses. That's why. That's the way to do it on Republic Day uh, here at Expats Portugal <laughs> webinar this evening. The real cost of living in Portugal. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Um, and yes, uh, mentioned there. I, I, I say fun with one breath, and then the next one, um, talking about the NHR. We won't do that on this particular call, but we've got the Dream Team session at nine, which is the perfect opportunity to deal with this news that's just come in. The scrapping of the. If you don't know. Prime Minister a couple of nights ago went on to Portuguese TV quite late in the evening. Uh, and then the day after, of course, it was all over the news and breaking for um, for expats, foreigners, immigrants coming into Portugal and the implications there might be with that. So let's talk about that. Give it a proper attention in the Dream Team session from nine. Right now, it's all about the real cost of living in Portugal. We've got a great panel for you and we'll talk about most aspects of living here in Portugal and what it's going to cost. Uh, so you can make those comparisons. Uh, let's go up to the north and uh, let's 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 introduce you to our panel first. And let's go up to the north in the beautiful Pineda Giresh. It's Jenny and Anne up there who are hopefully unmuted. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so do let us know, Jenny and Anne. Uh, where exactly are you? How long have you been here in Portugal and how are you enjoying it? Well, we've been here since March and we're originally from um, Scotland. Well, Anne's from Scotland. I'm originally from South Africa. And um, we just absolutely love it. It's beautiful. There's so many places here that remind us of Scotland and and me of South Africa as well. So amazing, yeah, it. yeah, and all of that sort of Portugueseness and Portuguese soul and spirit as well. Are you enjoying life here? It's excellent. <laughs> um, enjoying it very much. Great, especially excellent. the weather. Yes. Yeah, and we're having a late summer, aren't we? This year, how is it up in the north? Because some people think, oh, Pineda Giresh is going to be really cold up there. Is it cold? No, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. In the high twenties today. Right. Okay. So I guess the comparison with South Africa, um, you, you're you're dealing with hot weather. Scotland, it's got to be warmer than Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> right, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for being here and chipping in uh, with this cost of living special. Let's go to our, our old friend James, and I mean that in a good way. James in Estoril tonight. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Could you remind everybody how long you've uh, been here in Portugal? And I'm guessing you're enjoying yourself here, living in Portugal. Absolutely. I've been here since uh, we got here. Uh, my brother and I came together. We're, we've been here since the beginning of February. So it's been approximately eight months since we've been here. I live in Estoril, which is in the Kashkaish area, uh, west of Lisbon. And I really love it here. Um, I retired here. Uh, with the idea that uh, we'd do some sightseeing. And so we've been to visiting a lot of museums lately. So it's it's been really great. Oh, have you got a particular tip when it comes to museums and galleries? Well, they just changed the law so that uh, uh, if you're a resident, if you have your residency card, you can get into a lot of Lisbon uh, museums on Sundays for absolutely free. Brilliant. So, Excellent. It's, it's been great. So we've been taking advantage of that. So Super. it's pretty cool. Well, and thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. And each of our panelists uh, will have a different view on the respective subjects that we'll cover, different specialisms. Uh, so get asking those questions, if you will, in the chat, or if you're prompted to ask something, pop it in the chat and I'll get to it. Um, do we have a Mr. Holly here tonight? Have you managed to join us, James? That would appear not. Let's go. Let's go to Jackie. No, then. I, I'm oh. here. James, you are here. I can. It says so on your T-shirt. Um, good evening to you. <laughs> yes, finally got here. It only took me a half hour. Well, thank you for being here. It wasn't anything to do with Portuguese internet, was it? No, not at all. It's just technical stuff. I don't even. I still don't know how it 
ended up working, but I'm here. <laughs> You're here. That's the main thing. Uh, where are you and how long have you been here? I'm in Ericeira, um, which is northwest of Lisboa. And I have been here uh, two years next Monday. Wow. What a lovely anniversary to be said. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you for being here and spending time with us tonight. Let's go to uh, Jackie now uh, from the Expats Portugal team. Good evening, Jackie. Where are you? Hi, I'm in Cascais. I'm just outside of downtown Cascais in Costa de Guia. Okay, brilliant. And and how long have you been here? December 2019, went into lockdown March 2020. Wow, yeah. So I, I think you, you need some sort of rebate or credit there, don't you? Because a lot of your time in Portugal is actually locked indoors. Um, let's see who we can, speak, we can speak, <laughs> see who we can speak to about that. So thank you for being here tonight, uh, Jackie, as well. I know you've got some pretty deep analysis on, on the cost of living uh, when it's um, compared to the American uh, yeah. way of life so we'll come back to you on that let's start with um jenny and Anne, and we'll deal with utilities first um and don't feel like you have to be absolutely encyclopedic um just tell us you know what's the what are the standout things for you when it comes to gas electricity water internet etc jenny and Anne. uh utilities what we, let's begin with that what do you have to say about that well we we're renting a house at the moment so we are we are paying um 35 euros a month for our internet um, you asked about electricity, uh, we're paying 50 euros for our electricity and our water is spring fed, so we're not paying for water. Wow, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Um, straight off the bat there to start proceedings tonight. That's wonderful. Anything else you'd like to say about utilities comparing to South Africa or to Scotland, where you're from? Well, I, I, I compare to Scotland, there, there's no comparison. Mm. It's so much cheaper here. Yeah, uh, because I was we were spending like four hundred um, on LPG, which um, fired the radiators, and electricity was about eighty pounds a month. And I think two, every two or three months we paid four hundred pound for oh. the gas or yeah. the oil. Um, so there's there's no comparison at all. It's incredible, it's, isn't it? incredibly and, cheap here and is electricity your only form of power yeah okay all right so uh, in the winter if you want a different sort of heating source you might be looking at gas bottles and those sorts of things but for the time we've being, got a, we've got a, yeah we've got a fireplace in the kitchen yeah but um yeah so we would i think we yeah it's just we've got um electric radiator electric uh, fire um, heaters yeah OK, all right. Thank you very much for that. That does sound very reasonable. It's a great start uh, to the mm. evening. Uh, let's go to James then on utilities, uh, if you'd like to contribute on the utilities front, James. Uh, James in Estoril, that is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I pay about uh, between about $33 and $53 per, uh, per month. Um, um, so for the apartment, it's times two that. So it's, let's say, 60 to to $100 for all utilities um, uh, per month. Wow, okay. Um, well, and well, your heating and cooking, that, that's like heating, the power side. Well, heating and um, cooking and everything here is electric. Right. Uh, there's no gas involved. Um, and there's no air conditioning here in the apartment. Um, we just rely pretty much on on the cross breeze here. Okay. Uh, and we have fans running. So um, we have really haven't been here when it's too cold. Uh -huh. We were here in February when it was kind of cold, but it, then it warmed up pretty quickly after that. We haven't needed heat since at least probably the end of March. Right. So um, I can't really compare how that is yet. But, uh, um, we've got a question for you there. Was that euros or dollars, the, the, the numbers that you were giving there? I'm giving you dollars. Okay. All right. There you go, Joan and Becky, uh, asking that question. Um, do you, I think we heard that it was 35 for internet for Jenny and Anne. What are you paying, if I may ask, for internet connection for your Wi-Fi broadband? Um. I don't remember. It's it's about I want to say it's about fifty or sixty um, euros a month. 
Sounds about right. And uh, I think we'll, we'll probably have questions about the quality of connection. Uh, going back to some of the old webinars, I know out in the countryside, Jerry has struggled uh, with his internet connection, but cable is available. So you might want to ask questions uh, in the audience about the quality of connection uh, if you're going to a particular area and who the best providers are. So we can come back to that. Uh, thank you for the time being, James in Estoril. Let's go to James in Ericeira and ask you about your utilities, James. Carl, if it makes it easier, you can call me Slug. <laughs> okay, that might confuse everybody else. Yes. <laughs> right. But at least we'll know the difference between the James. We've got some explaining to do, but go on, yes, you too. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, first I just need to say I have a fairly uh, unique situation, I think, uh, in that I am renting a uh, studio uh, that is basically a converted garage space of the house of the people who own the property um, it has it's it's wired for electric separately from the household so i know what i'm spending is not put in the group um but uh essentially my rent includes the wi-fi because they're not charging me for their wi-fi um also uh they put me on their family plan for my phone so it's considerably cheaper than it would be otherwise and the rent is incredibly reasonable so those things will factor into my specific cost of living but um uh, the uh electricity bill runs Depending on the time of the year, uh, in the summer, it's generally cheaper. Uh, I think I just got last month's uh, bill, and it was somewhere around 30 or 40 euros. Mm -hmm. um, in the wintertime, it can get up to uh, probably around 80. So it, it doubles in the wintertime, but it's incredibly reasonable. It probably averages out to somewhere 60 euros a month. That's for, the, for the electricity yes yeah amazing uh laurie's asking uh, does utilities include water um not usually it's uh, often a separate water charge well it is a separate water charge unless of course you're part of a a rental package in which it's included i think the big question for you james is how did you land on your feet like that and how can other people do it and get such a good arrangement <laughs> well the the suggestion i make to, to anyone who is willing to listen to me is uh, if you're planning on moving, get started early, not with the move, but with the connections. I started uh, by looking for uh, Facebook groups in the area where I wanted to land, which was Eddie Serra, because it reminded me, I just got a real strong hit of Santa Cruz, California, which is where I spent a lot, uh, good part of my life and loved being there. Mm -hmm. um, so it started there. I, I made a uh, request to one of the groups if anyone was interested in a language exchange I could help them with English and they could help me with Portuguese um, I didn't get well I basically got one response to that it was someone saying yes I'd be interested and uh, very long and uh, lovely story uh, that person became a good friend of mine prior to ever getting on an airplane um, and that turned into a studio unit available for rent at a really great price and a ride home from the airport wow. when I got here. Amazing, amazing. Um, Laurie Mack, I think, could you mute for us? That'd be great. And let's go back to James. So that that's the beginning and they become family. Uh, you know, I refer to, it's difficult for me to make a reference as to, uh, you know, when I say, who these people are um, and the closest I can get is my, I, I refer to them as my Portuguese family. I had uh, lunch with them today. I mean, every week we, we share a meal together. It's an incredible situation. I know it's, it's very unique, but the point isn't really, Ooh, you know, you can get it, just do it just like I did it. The point is that I made connections before I ever left California. Yeah. So I had already started community and, and in that, then the things like, who do I call to get this done or how do I do this? Or, you know, you've got that connection already before you land here. And I, I can't recommend that more highly. It's been amazing. The second piece of it is you don't have to know where you're going to live for the rest of your life. You know, find a place in Portugal you think is manageable, plan on getting here, land there and then explore from there and then you can figure out where you want to be for the rest of your time here um right. i had a good idea that it would be it but i haven't done that much exploring so i'm still open to that 
Brilliant. Uh, extra value there. Uh, that little bit of insight from James the Slug. Um, and um, yeah, making connections, not the utility connections, not getting connected to the the, the water, electricity, or whatever, but making the social connections first. Laurie, we will come back to you uh, for sure. I want to say hi, Texas, uh, the wilderness in South Africa, um, Eshteril, of course, uh, Arizona, Louisiana, Edmonton in Canada, the UK, the Netherlands, Florida, San Francisco. Fantastic uh, audience tonight. Thank you for being here. Uh, Tacoma, um, Lisbon. Um, and yes, that NHR comment, we'll talk about that in the Dream Team session tonight. Nebraska as well. Scottsdale, Arizona, California, Seattle. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. And it was just a quickie for you there, Slug. Um, does or is Eris Sarah from Taisa? Hey, that's very familiar. Hey, Slug. Is Eris Sarah cool enough that it doesn't need air con? A quickie for you there. Uh, yes. I mean, it, it will get warm, but I don't think it's ever been more than... Um... I don't think it's ever gone beyond 32 centigrade here. So, you know, the, the low 90s Fahrenheit is, a, you know, the hottest days ever. Um, the other nice thing about being on the coast is that there's always a breeze as well. A breeze coming almost always comes from the north. So it's very, uh, I, I was saying to Louisa the other day, I was facing the ocean and the breeze was blowing off the ocean I, uh, and the sun was behind us. And I said, this is just incredible. My front is cold and my back is hot. <laughs> you know, it's just because you of the too could enjoy that in any Sarah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or other coastal so, places, yeah. Yeah, so the, the air movement helps a lot. It helps with the humidity as well. Um, and I have the, the short answer is I haven't, I don't have air conditioning. I don't, uh, in the winter, I have a very small space heater that I may use from time to time if it gets a little too chilly for me. My tolerance for weather change is shrinking as I get here and acclimate to, you know, what the weather is. So, yeah. you know, what I may have been able to tolerate in California and cold weather is now feeling cold when it's, warmer here that kind of thing so but Absolutely. yeah it's very little uh climate control is necessary uh, so again okay, great value electricity wise um people are very familiar with you another slug uh, aimed question here um what about cell phone costs we haven't talked about that as yet have we um sometimes it's a part of the internet package uh, cell phone cost for you james well, as I as I said, I'm on a family plan with oh, Luis and Sedona. Right. So, yes, your so Portuguese paying, family. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm paying about 20 euros a month for all my cell phone uh, requirements. Now, it, it's not an unlimited type plan. So I generally turn my, my uh, data off um, and I use it almost probably 95% on Wi-Fi, um, which is fine. I was doing that in California as well. I just, I don't stream movies, you know, uh, unless I'm available to Wi-Fi, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I've never, I've never, I, I get, I don't even know how many megabytes or gigabytes of, of data that I get per month, but I've never used too much of it. So that you works never, really well. You never well go past your huge 20 euro thresholds. Right, right. Wow. And, and I'm not, I'm not feeling constricted. It's not, like, oh, I have to really watch yeah. it. I can't do it. I just use my phone and I just never exceed the limits. So amazing. Okay, that's great value, isn't it? Um, and Excellent Astrid, value. Astrid, chip again. Cheers, Astrid. My prepaid mobile costs 20 euros. I need to speak to both of you. I'm not getting that sort of value. Uh, that's through Vodafone, prepaid mobile phone, 20 euros a month. You can get that sort of deal here in Portugal. Let's go to Jackie then. And I'll come back to you after this round of utilities, Laurie, if I may. Um, so Jackie, you've got some quite some deep analysis, haven't you, the comparisons of living in the United States uh, compared to Portugal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did it because the U.S. is so vast yeah. and costs something like California, California gas prices are over $6 on average. But then the lowest cost could be, let's see where I have it, Mississippi. So $3.12. So we have, it just really depends on where you're coming from, how you'll um, interpret how much cheaper Portugal is. Mm -hmm. um, but it was very interesting that even with the exception of gas prices, which we all figured were in the EU. So we knew coming here to fill up our tank, the highest it would cost me in Los Angeles is maybe dollars, $86 at just over $6 a gallon, like a 14 um, 
gallon gas tank. I hear it, was, it came close to 102 US dollars. So there's a big difference right there. I mean, that is probably the only place I ever see um, Portugal being an expensive country, but it's gonna be the same all over the EU. Otherwise, in terms of electricity, gas, water, definitely cheaper. In Portugal, we live in Cascais, we never use a um, air conditioner. We use a fan, it, it's always temperate, even in the winter. I mean, we don't even use our electric heaters that much. So, I, but we're coming from Boston, so we still have our cold tolerance. Um, at the moment, yeah, until yeah. you acclimatize, but yeah. The I, is, uh, yeah. And when but, uh, Jackie says a fan, you mean a plug-in electric one, not like a yeah. like fold-out yeah. one from one yeah. handbag. A, a, a plug-in electric. Um, and that seems to do great. We have ceiling fans, and I have never felt uncomfortable in, in any way. Um, we do have bundled internet, though, and it's not, I think you guys are getting a better deal than us. Yeah. Well, we get a lot. We are getting two phones. We're getting a landline. We're getting internet, Wi-Fi, and cable. So that's a lot, and we're paying $140 a month. Yeah. But... Okay, but that's yeah, I, I pay I pay similar actually for 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 everything to do with yeah. phones and internet. Um, that sounds about right. It perhaps is the higher end for the for the most sort of bandwidth and um gigas and so on. But uh, sounds about right. Uh, but you know that's not a bad um ceiling sort of top level of to be paying for both phones, uh, a home phone if you still use one, and internet coverage of course at home. Uh, anything else you want to say, Jackie, on the gas? Uh, not um, as, not as in petrol gas, but as in um, the gas for heating, etc., electricity, water, etc. Okay, so just let's look at something uh, in the U.S. So electricity, the highest you'll probably find now. I got this was a big debate. Me and my husband were do, both doing this together. We're trying to figure this out. Hawaii and Alaska you'll tend to get the most expensive for everything, all utilities and food. I think it's highest in a state like Connecticut because they have a winter. Hmm. But I couldn't understand Utah being the cheapest because they have a winter. So you're getting Connecticut $226 for electricity and 88 for those that same the average for those states, $88. This is just an average, you know, they're big houses, little houses, different amounts of people. What you're also getting for gas, let's say in Hawaii, thank goodness it's warm, is 122 average a, a month, as opposed to Oregon, $32 a month on average. So the discrepancies are huge in the states. Yeah. And I think, one of the things you start to realize is you're not, you're going to find discrepancies in Portugal, but not like that, not of that magnitude. So the Good numbers point. we're giving you for our Portuguese expenses are all going to be somewhat similar. Yep, I think that's point. something to think about. It is, and and obviously people coming from the states will will feel um, a greater or or, or lower. Um, relief at the prices here, given that the prices do vary so much in the United States. But a great, a great guide for us. Thank you, Jackie, for the time being. Um, you, you've moved us into um, car expenses, which we'll go to in a moment. I know a couple of our panelists are public transport users, so let's bring that in at this, this point as well. But we did have a question from Laurie, I believe. Laurie, are you happy to uh, contribute at this point and be on the recording? Let's get you unmuted. Oh, she's I'm just... Me. Hi. You are there. Hi, Laurie. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I actually have a question because um, I just got an apartment in Tomar. Congratulations. And, Excellent news. Thank you. Don't come until January, but I've got, got it. Um, <laughs> but uh, Jim had told, do not consider any place with an energy rating lower than B. Okay. My options, none of them were better than E. So, and as it was, I literally got the final lease a day and a half before my uh, VFS appointment. So, it, yeah, yeah. Well, and 
my the agent had pre-qualified me for my two little dogs, but they kept when when asked for a showing, they'd say, "Well, no, she's got dogs." <laughs> so yeah, it it was a squeaker. But I I'd like some advice for someone who obviously does not have a B or better rating. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because I do get cold e- easily. I am in Arizona. I've been here for 46 years. And uh, I also have neuropathy. So my extremities get cold. So you need to know how to keep warm in the winter in a, in a poorly insulated building. Not go broke. <laughs> and not, and not go broke, all importantly as well. Yes. Okay, so we'll bear that in mind and we'll come back to that. Thank you, Laurie. You. And, and, and great news that you've, you've got your place. Uh, yeah. and be in tomorrow um in in the, in the next few months really um so congratulations yep. that's wonderful all right let's let's go into transport and into uh motoring uh first of all um i know that the jameses are public transport users uh it may be uh jenny and ann and jackie that have more to say on motoring jackie do you want to start this bit off um with car ownership with car ownership like i said earlier about gas let, let me start first. I've owned a car in Boston. I've owned a car in Los Angeles. Owning a car here in Portugal is like owning a car in Los Angeles in that your car stays new for forever. Mm. When you live in Boston and the, the potholes, the snow, your cars do not last. Yeah. So the good news is your car is really going to last here. The second thing is I have, we have not found when we get our car repaired, like we have a very good mechanic. We never felt gouged. We always felt that people gave us very, very fair prices. And our car is just a Volvo, like every other car is today that you see that's black and looks like every other car on the street, but it runs well. The roads are great. Our car just stays in good shape. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing I'd like to just mention, Ubers are so inexpensive here that you wonder with the price of gas, how these poor Uber drivers can make any money, yeah. but they're very, very inexpensive. Yes. So those are some of the things to consider as well. And lastly, Lori, I have a, a building I live in with a C minus and I, my bills are low. So I, I don't know. I may be a better building. I would have better bills, but I can't complain. Great. Jackie, can you give us an idea on the um, the cost of keeping the car on the road, your your insurance and the, um, the the actual tax, the road tax, as it were, for keeping it on the road? I will have to bring my husband here later because I don't know that. I don't know that. Give a heads his... up now. We'll come back to that. That's great. <laughs> okay. Right. I will give Thank you, you could that. get on because he really keeps up with that. But just in terms of I use diesel. Yeah. That's olio. And that's still, I feel like my car runs on a full tank for forever, yeah. but diesel is a very different animal. I, and I think only major trucks use it in the U S not regular cars, but we're and it using sounds like you, you have a different time. lifestyle anyway. I mean, that's what we'll talk to James and James about is, is moving here. It's not such a, I mean, it is a car based culture, no question, but it's not a car based culture in the way that the United States is. Um, what about South Africa and Scotland uh, with um, Jenny and Anne? Are you car owners? And how do you find the price of um, of motoring? Yeah, we've we've got a car because we live quite far from our nearest town. So we're about, say, about 15 kilometers from our nearest biggest town where the big shops are. Mm. So we did need a car. Um, we hired a car when we first arrived and we had two weeks to find a car. So we had really quick... But the community around here, I mean, obviously we couldn't speak much Portuguese, we didn't very little Portuguese, but the people around here had contacts and soon put us in, in, in contact with car dealers and that we came across a really excellent car dealer who, uh, in fact, lent us a car while, while our car was, um, you know, getting um, or going through all the tests and getting matriculated and all that. So... Um, that was fantastic, and we would never have had that in the UK at all. Free of charge, lent us his car for a week, so that was brilliant. That's superb, isn't it? And your, yeah. your general motoring costs, um, the same question that I was asking uh, Jackie there, you know, the, the road tax, uh, the equivalent, and your insurance? Well, our road tax is much cheaper than in the UK. Insurance is pretty much the same, um, possibly less, um, but you can use your, your insurance, you can go anywhere in the EU, with right. 
with the with the, with the car. Um, petrol is 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 ex pretty much the same as the yeah. UK. It's it's quite expensive, but then the thing is that we're not using the car that much because we walk a lot. So when we're in town, we park up and you walk, and that's what people do here. You know, they don't. When the, there's not much parking space, when you find a parking space, you don't pay. It's you know, you, there's no um, meters here for parking. So that we find obviously in the big cities it's different, but in the little villages you don't pay for parking. Brilliant. And can I see um, the cost of repairs and things? It's almost half price compared to Scotland. Yes. Yeah, um, I think what Jackie was saying is true as well. And, you, and, and, and people, in my experience, people, the mechanics feel very trustworthy. Uh, yeah. not, not the gouging that Jackie talked about and, you know, the yeah. drama and the song and dance and the sharp intake of breath. Very fair pricing. Well, I had a punch in my tyre. I went over a nail and um, my, my neighbour next door, she took me to the local guy who just fixed the puncture and I paid 13 euros to fix a puncture. One three. One three. Very and, good. Yeah. Okay. And that was everything. He did everything. He just, I just, he said, just sit over there and he fixed the whole lot. And it was, um, yeah, everything, 13 euros. And then he but, took but, it but, along but, to another garage because it was set up in English. And yeah. so he took it along to another garage that was close by the computer to, to, to get this other guy to fix this, the computer part of it. <laughs> superb excellent 13 euros then for repairing a puncture and that excellent level of personal service uh let's yeah. thank you very much for the timing oh and denise was asking you um fellow south african there where you're situated up in the north um nearest big town is pontalima isn't it that people might have heard ponte de barca ponte de barca beg your pardon okay ponte de barca okay uh there you go denise uh let's go to the jameses let's go to the slug first then um and i could make a joke couldn't i you know how does a slug travel very slowly <laughs> Uh, but uh, what's what's your comment on public transport then, James? Uh, I have been using public transportation exclusively uh, for two years um, with one caveat, which is, again, because my family goes into the villa, I'm about four and a half uh, uh, kilometers from the center where the center of town. So uh, it's not easily accessible to me by walking or, well, bicycle is a little easier, but it's very hilly. So a lot of my, you know, chores or errands are generally addressed because the family plans, you know, when we go out to go grocery shopping on a Sunday, it's a six hour adventure. It's not like you just go to the store and buy food, right? Yeah. Then you go to this place and you go to that place and you go take care of your bill there. And, you know, so there's just that whole thing. But in that, because I'm always invited, I can take care of those things as well. And that's once or twice a week. So I don't need to use the bus to get there. If I did, it would take me about 10 minutes. It takes me 10 minutes to walk to the nearest bus stop, another 10 minutes to get into the vehicle. Not incredibly uh, inconvenient. Um, but my screen just changed, so it, it threw my, <laughs> my attention off a little bit. But anyway, um, uh, I uh, the but there is a, a monthly bus pass or not bus a transportation pass for the Lisboa uh, region, which includes uh, all of Ericeira through Lisboa uh, to Santo Isidoro uh, to uh, all the way down to uh, uh, I believe it. Um, uh, now I'm uh, getting well, the names mixed up. At least at the world. South, yeah. Yeah, Estoril and and Cascais and, and uh, all the way down south of Lisboa. So it's a huge area, and for uh, for forty euros per month, you have a pass or card that allows you to use all forms of public transportation in that region at no additional charge. So the most you would ever have to spend on public transportation uh, would be 40 euros. Now, if you're a, a senior, you get it for half that. So then it's 20 euros a month right. and that's the most. What I have found is I don't use the transportation enough that, you know, to buy a 20 euro pass, it would be more than I would spend if I paid full fare. So it's really only fair once you get to the full 20 usage on the card. So it's like basically 
20 euros for how till you use that up and then everything is free till the end of the month it's more how it works than uh, actually half off everything That's but that funny. that gets me everywhere i need to go um getting to lisboa from Eriza is very possible because we have i don't know maybe up to 10 buses a day that make that trip um but it can be incredibly slow most of those buses take about an hour and a half where by car it's half that time so uh, fortunately for me time is not an issue you know i have lots of time so it doesn't if i'm on bus i can just enjoy you it's not an issue for people who don't want to get out of their hurry to get everywhere as fast as they can lifestyle which will probably change once you get here um <laughs> then then having a car may feel essential but it uh, i I went 15 years in Santa Cruz, California without a car, and it was just fine. Um, I owned a car for a few years, and that was fine, and now I don't have a car again. So I'm not I, I'm not dependent on a car. And the transportation, the, the trains are great. Uh, the only problem with the train is it takes me about twice as long to get to my destination because it takes me, I have to get to the train station in Lisboa. Yep. So you know, it takes me nearly as long to get to the train station. It takes me to get from the train station to my destination. But um, I've had nothing but uh, positive experiences using the public transportation. I've used the metro. I'm fairly familiar with metro in Lisboa. I've used the buses and I've used the trains. Um, so I think that is a fear of people, isn't it? But using public transport means it might be dangerous uh, or a bit sketchy or whatever. But actually, most people speak very highly of public transport, which I suspect uh, James in Estoril will do. Now, thank you, uh, the slug, for that for the time being. Uh, what, what have you got to add to that, uh, James uh, in Estoril? Well, actually, James the slug kind of took all, all of my uh, locomotion <laughs> out of me because uh, he he um, he was he was talking about the Lisboa uh, pass, which is forty euros, uh, and then if you're sixty five or older, it's twenty. Um, and then also, Jackie was talking about how inexpensive, relatively speaking, um, the uh, Uber rides are here, and also there's something here called Bolt. Uh, which uh, is, uh, some argue, is even cheaper than that. Um, so it's very affordable. So for me, I haven't really needed the car. And since I live in Estoril, which is um, within the uh, Conselho of uh, Cascais, um, I'm literally about a kilometer away, a walk away from the train, which takes me right into downtown Lisbon. Um, for that, um, and I'm not 65 yet. So for that, I pay what's called zapping. I pay, uh, which is zapping is, is you pay as you go, in other words. So I pay just under two euros for each time I go in to Lisbon um, on the train. Um, if you're 65 and older, you can get this $40, uh, $20 pass um, and that'll cover um, that trip uh, for free as part of the $20 uh, uh, amount. Now, I could pay $40 and get it covered, but I don't, well, as, as James the Slug does, I don't, I don't travel enough to uh, justify paying, paying $40 for that. So I, also, I will add one more thing. Um, there is a national train pass and I don't remember the rules, maybe somebody else can pitch in on this, but I believe it's $48 a month for unlimited travel throughout Portugal on the long distance trains. Yeah, I think that's about right. And uh, you, you would go to cp.pt, um, which is the train service of the country, which actually from wherever you are in the world, if you log on to cp.pt, uh, de Portugal.pt, um, you can get an amazing amount of information about the country, the trains, the price of the trains and so on are there and the special offers that James is just talking about there. And thank you for answering the question about what a senior is. Uh, 65 is the threshold, right, James? Uh, pretty much. Um, some things um, are 62. Most things are 65. Yeah. And thank you for working so hard behind the scenes. This is happening more and more on our webinars on a Thursday evening. 
the, the, the speakers here are helping people with direct messages and the community are talking to each other as well, helping each other out, which is a fantastic extension of what goes on, of course, at the forum, uh, expatsportugal.com. So I think we've touched on utilities and car expenses there in public transport. Uh, we need to move on to the all important uh, matter of food and those sorts of uh, household costs. Uh, and uh, finally, eating out. If you haven't had a question answered, don't worry, we will come round to uh, all of the, as many of the questions I can group together uh, before the end of the recording. And then, of course, when we turn the recording off, you'll get a chance to hang out with our panel here and ask some very specific questions like health insurance. I think we'll probably cover that in, in the recorded part, actually, because it's an important topic um, and the price of uh, eye care, eye examinations and that sort of thing. So thank you for asking about those um, in our audience here. So let's go to the supermarket, which is traditionally the realm of the queen of the supermarket trolley astrid uh here tr traditionally um however let's go back to jenny and Anne, uh, uh, and uh, astrid may chip in of course uh with some serving suggestions uh, but jenny and Anne, how do you find it going to the supermarket here compared to south africa and or scotland well we find it's really cheap um most things are much cheaper than the uk so um um, our monthly bill is is around about I'd say about four hundred euros a month for the two of us. Right, excellent. Um, that's for groceries, dogs' food. Um, it it varies, depends on whether we need uh, cleaning stuff. You know, it goes it it, it varies, but uh, relatively speaking, we'd say it's around about mm. that. That's great. Very succinct as well. So we'll come back to you with that sort of saving. You can afford to eat out. So we'll come back to you and ask you yeah. about where you, <laughs> where you like eating out and how much that costs. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, um, James, the slug. Then um, this uh, the, the lift you get with the Portuguese family to the market and the supermarket. How much uh, would you say that's costing you a month? Well, in terms of comparison, I'm finding it to be fairly close to what I was spending in California. Uh, Interesting. For yeah. yeah. So I think groceries seems to be, and for me, groceries is everything you buy at a supermarket. So it's not all food, um, but uh, it is, this category is the one that is closest in terms of what my expenses were in California. Um, on an actual amount, um, I don't eat a lot, but I don't, skimp either so I, I think i'm kind of an average eater um and i spend probably somewhere between 35 and 40 euros a week on right. my grocery roughly that and I, I i think i was spending something close to that in dollars when i was in california and that was two years ago so that's the other thing Com price comparisons for me i have no idea what things cost in california now yes um, so it seems like a relatively less difference, but I'm sure the prices have gone up there as they've gone up here gradually. So, you know, um, I always have to consider that as well. Yeah, brilliant. And I think the prices probably have gone up in California in the last uh, couple of years. And we're looking forward to your book, How to Look So Well and Healthy on 35 euros a week. <laughs> Um, at the supermarket as well. Uh, thank you for the time being. James Eshteril, your supermarket spending. Um, I have to agree with uh, James the Slug because uh, I, I'm also a California immigrant, um, and my my costs for uh, groceries here are not entirely dissimilar. It's a little bit less expensive, but um, here I spend about I would say about 210 euros a month here, whereas back there I was spending probably at least. 30%, uh, maybe 20% more. Uh -huh. um, but I also eat out here a lot more than yeah. I ever did in Los Angeles. So that that makes a difference too. So. Good for you. I can't wait to hear about that and get a few recommendations in Estoril. Thank you, James, for that. Jackie. And um, we need you on, on mute as well, Jackie. Hi, something that to consider that a lot of people how they change their eating is in the US, for instance, we, for health conscious, we eat organic bio foods. They call them bio here, they're organic in the US. But because EU laws are so much stricter about food than they are in the US, most people will stop spending that extra money for the organic products and just eat regular products once they land here. So that's something to consider in terms of food prices. 
Okay, that's brilliant. And uh, if if after the recording's over, I, I think we might be able to give a few recommendations of supermarkets where you can, which are better or worse for that kind of bio food and the equivalent of whole foods that you'll be used to in the US. Anything else you want to contribute um, with supermarket shopping, Jackie? I think that's it. I It's interesting that they did a cost comparison in the US of supermarkets and Lidl, which we have here, it's relatively new in the US, has come as one of the best values of supermarkets now in the US. So we have Lidl here. I buy a lot of things at Lidl because I like the layout. I don't get lost like I do in Continent. <laughs> but the truth is, I like going to the Midgado. Every place has their own Midgado. Yeah, and that's I like the municipal knowing, market, right? The daily right. fresh produce market. Yeah, and I, I honestly, I feel safer there because you, you get to really know who the vendors are. You, you figure out if it's coming from their farm, if they're buying it from someplace else. Yeah. And the prices don't seem much different. So yes, that's right. Very good. Thank you very much. Astrid, this is your realm traditionally. Would you like to add anything? No, I've just put my comment in the in the chat. So for, for myself and two daughters, probably around 120 euros a week on, on groceries. Um, they eat a lot, um, growing <laughs> girls. So so we do part of our um, our shopping from the fresh produce from the market and then the rest from usually little because it's the most economical. Super. In my experience, my, yeah. my experience. That's great. Thanks, Astrid, for that. Stuart's living the dream. Every morning, I walk an average of 12,000 steps. However, I come home and eat a packet of pastel donatas. <laughs> That's amazing, Stuart. Another book, possibly, The, Port the, the Portugal Diet uh, there. And it looks like you spend as much as uh, Jenny and Anne do on, on groceries. Stuart, that sounds like an amazing lifestyle. Um, and uh, yeah, one that would be, be enviable for, uh, for people all around the world. Um, OK, the all important dining out then, because it's so important in this culture, I think, isn't it, to support the local cafes, restaurants. It's so much a part of Portuguese life. Uh, Jenny and Anne, I think people need will be getting out there if they're not already taking notes. Uh, we're going to be getting a few recommendations about how to eat out, possibly where to eat out in Portugal. What are your favourites and what does it cost for you to eat out? Well, our little our little local cafe is just down the road. So that's the, I mean, our little village, everything evolves around the cafe. Yeah. And the owners of the cafe speak English, which is a bonus for us. So we've been able to ask them so many things. Where do we get wood? How do we do this? How do we do that? So um, eating out, we go and you know, you can just pick up snacks. A uh, toasted, a toasted sandwich will cost us two euros. A, um, a glass of coke, just a euro. Um, and a, a, you know, um, it's it's not expensive. I mean, it's so it really you feel feel bad how, with how cheap. Yeah, it is. I think it's if you're buying a meal, yeah. basically it'll be half the, the price that it would be in Scotland. Right, right. Yeah. And what sort of things do you like to eat when you're eating out? Well, um, um, fresh uh, f uh, seafood, yeah. um, steak, um, burgers. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, I've also mentioned, I meant to, uh, to tell you, we also have the uh, market comes um, once a fortnight here, and that's fresh fruit and veggies and eggs and all the local produce we can get. So that is also really, really good. Fantastic. How much are you paying for a cup of coffee up there? What is it? Uh, I think it's just just a euro. Well, yeah. it was. we had five coffees and two Cokes the other day, and it was seven euros. Perfect. That's a great comparison for people to be able to make there. It's not a spiced pumpkin latte or anything like that. It's just straight. No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, a, a Portuguese espresso shot probably, isn't it? Um, and yeah. we'll teach you how to order an Americano before the end of the webinar as well, for those who yeah. need to do that when they get here. Um, Jenny and Anne, anything else about eating out? No, it's just where, um, wherever you go, it's fresh. The food yeah. is always cooked to order and it's right there um lovely yeah. always we've never had a bad meal here in portugal 
All right. Oh, isn't that great to hear? Fresh food. So you might have to wait a little bit longer, but what's wrong with that? Um, and um, uh, fresh and great value. That's wonderful. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jenny and Anne there. We better go to James. Oh, so Jackie's waving her hand. Is that to ask? Uh, is that to answer the question about the price of beer, Jackie? No, no. But I just wanted to give a shout out. And I told myself I wouldn't tell. I'm just giving this to the Expats Portugal group. But okay. there is a restaurant in Sintra. It's only five months old. I used to drive by it and I'd see lines down the block. It was right off a major thoroughfare. I couldn't figure out. I had, I drive by there all the time. I went in there. I realized it was a restaurant. People were waiting in line for a restaurant. This is after it had been, only been open two months. It's called Gabra Macho. Gabra Macho. And we went out, uh, friends of ours, my friends from Los Angeles. And what it is if you think about it, and I mean this very respectfully, it's Portuguese peasant food elevated, and it is so inexpensive. So three of us, lots of beer, Pepsi, soups, every, we ate like kings. And for the three of us, it was roughly 40 euros. Now that, I guess it doesn't sound cheap, but you had to see how much was on the table. Sounds good to me for three people uh, eating like kings and queens from the soup to the nuts, you might say. Yes. And it was truly amazing. Yeah. The thing is, if you go to certain towns now in historic Sintra, I, I'd say that they're really gouging the tourists right now. I, I, I was kind of shocked recently yeah. when I saw like an $8 burger become a $17 burger. Yeah. But this place is right away from the tourists and it is truly amazing. And I would recommend if anyone's going to Sintra, unfortunately, it's all over like the Instagram. Everybody's talking about this place, including you tonight. I so know. The, that I is the, ca the, the Cabra Macho, is it called? The Macho yeah. Goat? Yes. Okay. Cabra Macho. All right. Sounds like an amazing place. Thank you very much <laughs> for that. Um, I know that James the Slug likes a beer from time to time. How much does a, uh, a glass of beer cost in Eli Sailor, James? Well, I also love the, the Portuguese. I, I'm, I'm learning Portuguese almost literally one word at a time. I find the most valuable single word that I can use so then I can use it all the time. And in this case, I use depend, which means it depends. It's a, very, it's a joke amongst Portuguese well as other people who live here, um, because so much does. Um, and in Ericeira, as Jack was saying, you, you get tourist areas where you pay 350 for an Imperial, which is you know basically a, a tap beer. Ouch. Um, that is, it's like, that's California prices when I left. You know, that was a beer. <laughs> Well, actually, I guess at, at a at a pub, it would be more double that six. But uh, in everywhere else, you can. The other thing is, you can get beer in almost any place that serves any kind of food, whether it's a pastelaria or a restaurant or or a bar or a pub. So beer is readily available. Um, I am pretty much lightweight, so I tend to buy imperials at minis, which are perfect for me. It's like basically one. It's it's what not even half a liter. No, a liter is way too much. Right, it's three hundred, isn't it? Three thirty or three hundred? Yeah, it's somewhere between uh, two fifty and three hundred milliliters. It's, it's so it's perfect for me. Some people go, oh man, you don't drink much. It's like no, I don't. Uh, and then I have a, a Portuguese friend who says I always order the minis or the small ones because I like my beer cold. Yeah. So I finish. I order another one and it's cold. I, if I get a big one, it gets warm and I don't like that. It's like, so whatever. But that, uh, a regular Imperial, it runs usually about a euro 50. Very good. There you go, Brian, euro 50. Anything else you want to say about eating out, James? Uh, yeah. One of the things is I don't do it a lot. I, I didn't in California either. So, uh, the, you know, my budget could manage more. Um, Part of that's because I'm uh, not as uh, the, the villa itself, where all the places are, is not as readily available to me. So if I wanted to go out to eat, I'd need to take a bus to get down to the villa and have to time it in a way that I can also get back by the time I was done. If it's uh -huh. at night, and, and so those kinds of things factor in. Um, but I have I have eaten out in a variety of different places from you know mom and pop home cooking type uh, 
cafes to more fine dining type places. What I have found is um, I, I had been reading before I came here and reading about these, you know, eight year old lunches. And I said, wow, that's amazing. And you get wine and a course and this and that and everything for eight euros. And I got here and I didn't find anything for less than 12. And um, Louisa said, yeah, it used to be, but prices keep going up. So it's more than that. But I ate out so little in California that I was thinking, wow, 12 euros for lunch. That's, that seems awful lot. But because I, you know, eight euros is what it would have been in California back, you know, back in the day, whatever. Uh, so what I realized is that that 12 euro lunch in uh, Portugal is probably closer to a $20 lunch in California now. You know, two years Thank later. So again, the comparisons, are, they're going up. But even still, um, it, that includes your meal. It includes uh, the pri that price. Uh, well, you pay separately. But if you get all these things, you can probably get a bottle of wine, a full meal, a dessert um, uh, for 15 to 20 euros yeah, you know, for, right. for, one, for one serving. So yeah. it's still very reasonable. Um, there was something else. Oh, the, I wanted to say something about the fresh. People keep saying fresh. And I think what a lot of people don't understand in the United States, because it is so huge, and the United States is so accustomed to importing their, their produce from Asia and South America, where all the fruit, for instance, is picked green and doesn't ever ripen correctly by the time you buy it at the grocery uh, I, I love fruit, and, and it, it, for the last 20 years of my life in California, it's like I, I couldn't eat any of it. It was all too green or you know too hard. It just wasn't juicy. It wasn't sweet. It's like, eh. But now, the thing that we don't realize is that Portugal is one-fifth. It's 20% of the area of the state of California. And almost everything is grown in the country. So everything is less than a day's freight uh, truck or train or however you get it here to where you sell it so they yeah. can pick it riper you uh, you buy it ripe and sweet and juicy and you have to eat it within a couple of days because there's not going to be preservatives it's not going to stay on your counter rock hard until it turns brown and dies you know <laughs> it's going to be fresh fresh fruit and vegetables so when they say fresh yeah. they mean it yeah you know, the poultry and the meat is is butchered within one or two days of it being available to you in the grocery to to take home and eat the fish the same thing oftentimes same day catch so when they when people are saying fresh in portugal it's different than fresh like oh it just got here to the store even though it's been on the road for three months um so that's important to keep in mind and in that's general, a great health point as james said, very good yeah, very yeah. good james uh, let, let's conclude shall we on um on the uh, webinar tonight uh, i want to squeeze in very quickly about health insurance but we haven't heard from james yet who's been really helpful again james and estriel in the comments uh, and i think you want to say something about freshness uh, and cost of eating out james if you will um i think it's pretty pretty much been said it, it, the food is just so fresh here when when you go out to a restaurant you can just tell that it's been freshly picked or the fish has been caught off the boat that, that morning. Um, so um, I have a lot of food sensitivities and it hasn't bothered me near as much here as it did when I was living in Los Angeles. Very interesting. And it's, and it's so much less expensive here. Right, and you, had, you made a good point about tipping. What would you say about tipping? Um, there's very little tipping here um, when you get into the Portugal areas away from the tourist areas. Um, the tourist areas are kind of overrun with people who feel they need to or want to tip a lot. So when you go to a, the tourist areas, they often expect or ask for tips. Mm -hmm. um, and they will ask you outright or they will point to a thing on the menu that says service not included as if you're not gonna tip them. So um, it's not a Portuguese thing, as I understand it, to normally tip unless something is really above and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of tourist coming in and paying large tips drives the prices up. So that's just something to keep aware of. Yeah, that's really interesting and, and very important. Thank you, James, for that. Um, so very quickly then, and we'll, we'll conclude the recording. 
and uh, we'll go to some of the uh, more personal questions that I wasn't able to get to. But we should, I think, include this uh, question about uh, health insurance. Um, does anybody want to share their numbers on health insurance? Because it's often quite the shock for uh, the American uh, moving to uh, Portugal. Jackie, go ahead first. Hi. So one of the main reasons we moved to Portugal was the cost of health insurance. And we've been asked, should we get private? And I think listening to Jerry, he always sums it up really well. Yes, you should get private because there's no waiting in the queue that you get your own room um, and you could be seen by a specialist pretty much the same day. One of the things that was the difference for us for health insurance, it was gonna be close in Boston because we were too young for Medicaid. It was gonna be close to 20,000, like 18 or 19 and change, I don't remember. We're paying 2,000, for both of us per year, that's US dollars. We're paying two, roughly 2,000 euros per year. Very good. So Very it's good. a fraction of the price and Thank it's Thank you for great. that comparison. Yep, and it's good as well, that's right. Um, James, you had your hand up as well, James Inesh Daril. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, you need to really do some research on private health insurance because health insurance doesn't work the same way here as it does in the States. Um, you basically, if you need emergency care, you go to the public system. If you need um, serious care for like cancer or other serious diseases, you, you go to the public system. Everything in between is covered by the private system. And that's what your insurance covers. So it's very different in the way that it works here. And so that's reflected in the price. I'm 63. My MGen insurance is about 140 euros a month. Just that's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, James Slug wanted to add to that as well. And uh, we'll need you to unmute. It keep, you keep muting me. <laughs> or someone right. does. It keeps going to mute anyway. <laughs> it's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, I qualified for Medicare before I left California. Um, Medicare was costing me, uh, and I always kind of, I, I guess I still have some resentment about it. My free health care uh, <laughs> as an old person in California was costing me $140 a month for the, for the plan B, um, which is, you know, the checkups and the appointments and whatever. Um, when I got educated about the insurance, and I do highly recommend Winsurance, um, Nunu, who uh, is kind of the lead guy there, is actually a very good friend of mine now. Um, and this is, it's not just unique to him. I called him up to get some information about insurance, which took about 10 minutes to get really good information, but I spent an hour and a half on the phone with him talking about life and family and people. And, you know, so the, it's just such a different culture. Anyway, um, he recommended MDEM um, by virtue of my age and that they covered, uh, they covered seniors and they covered people with pre-existing conditions. So I got all of that. Um, and I, I'm hearing these new prices, so maybe I got in at a good time, but uh, I was getting all of that, uh, which included more expensive stuff, not what James said. You know, that it included up to what 60,000 euros a year for hospitalization and those kinds of things as well. So, all of that, basically the same as my $140 a month Medicare, I got for 109 euros a month. Very good. Uh, without without having to worry about any sort of pre existing conditions or anything. I will add that, that as James said, one of the things that, that Americans don't realize when it comes to private and public is that one of the, my considerations in, in do I get private or not is that everything that Americans are afraid of is going to make them homeless if they get sick is taken care of by the public system. Yes. The serious things, the hospitalizations, the surgeries that are necessary, those things are, are paid for by the taxes. So there's no additional cost. Um, and the, the private health care, the way it was explained to me and how it's worked is if you don't want to, the explanation is you can get everything done in the public health care system. But if you don't want to wait for something that's not considered essential or urgent, anything that's not pressing is going to move you further down the queue. If you're dying, they're going to call an ambulance right now, take you to the hospital and take care of you. 
It's not, oh, you have to wait three months for that. None of that baloney. Um, so the healthcare, the private healthcare is more a function of convenience. I can make an appointment to get uh, my heart checked or a cardiology appointment, um, as James said, within a, a week or, you know, whatever. Um, and just to give you some prices, because this is why people are here, what does it cost? Um, recently, I went and had my annual checkup through the public health care system. She, uh, my, my doctor recommended three tests at a clinic, which included an electrocardiogram, um, a, a cardio echogram, and a Holter, a 24-hour EKG, just to check my heart out. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, there were one or two other things that were part of that, plus the follow-up appointment with my family doctor. And all of them together cost me 30 euros, and that was just because of the private cost of going to see the cardiologist. That, but, that ev was a th but everything cost 30? Yes. The, right. it, it, well, there was a third, there was a 30, no, it was an 18 euro charge to see the cardiologist in the private healthcare system. Everything else was 30 euros. The medications I got, I was prescribed a, a 60 day prescription. Um, and this is the first time ever in my life I've been on prescribed medication. And I thought, okay, well, that's usually where people get hit. Um, I asked how much it was and she said, um, what was it? Two, two euros 80. And I said, for, for just what one, you know, one box or, you know, you know, she said the 60 days is two euros 80. And Amazing. I just, just like, and she said, but you can get them cheaper if you want um, generic. <laughs> That's amazing. We yes. should we should we should uh, conclude here. Um, this has been uh, understandably quite a long recording and a webinar, but there's been so much incredible information. Thanks to our wonderful panel, who I'll thank now. And then when the recording is stopped, you'll get a chance to ask uh, these folks more questions if we haven't covered them already. So, uh, Jenny and Anne, thank you so much in the north of Portugal for being here. James in Estoril, thank you. James the Slug in Eric Sarah, thank you. And of course, Jackie from the Expats Portugal team and Astrid for your um, um, in the, including your comments as well this evening let's pause the recording there and we'll go to uh, hands up uh, mics open and get to the rest of the questions before the dream team session in only about 20 minutes time so much information tonight thank you so much so far